All right, I'd like to tell you about the electric field due to a straight, uniformly charged wire. Okay, this is um, probably the most complex thing in this chapter. Okay, so you have this um, uniform wire. It's uh, It runs, uh, we'll put it so it centers at the origin of a coordinate system. And um, it's got a length L. It's got a charge Q. And um, it's positively charged. And so um, the electric field, if we want to know it at um, a particular point, let's say um, A away right from the center. So this is, a, this is a point A away right here. This distance right there is A. Um, then um, this is the problem, is that some of this charge is real close, some of it's far away. So how do you handle that? Well, you remember when we had several point charges along this axis and we found the electric field due to all of them well we're going to do the same thing we're going to break this we're going to segment this into um, a, we'll just draw some generic segment there that's that's not q the whole thing is q that's a very tiny segment we're going to call that dq and the reason we're going to call it dq is because the length of this segment is um, dy it's got a very, very tiny um, segment called, we're going to call it dy. It's up here, a height of y above the, above the x-axis. So there it is. It's an up there, an axis, a height of y above the, the um, x-axis. It's got a little charge dq, and the, it's got a little, a very thin thickness dy. And because of that, we can treat it like a point charge. In fact, it's putting a field, just just this is putting a field this way. Now, I'm drawing that big, but it's actually a very tiny field because dq is really tiny. But I'm drawing it big so that you can see it. But this field, I'm going to call it de because it's so tiny. And as you might guess, um, I'm going to add up the fields from all these. But here's the problem is that the fields from each one of these DQs, this little DQ, this little DQ, and so on, they all point in different directions. And, and they're vectors. And so you can't just go ahead and add vectors that don't point all in the same direction. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we're going to do is, first of all, let's realize that, um, that all the Y components, if I break DE, into um, an X and a Y component, so DE sub X and DE sub Y, that all the Y components will add up to zero. Because for every one that's here, there'll be one up here where the, the Y is negating it. But their DE sub X's will add up. I'm going to call this theta. And by the way, this is theta also because of alternate interior angles. All right, so the DE, if you want to know what DE is, it's the electric field for a point charge, which is K, DQ, all over the distance between um, the DQ and the point. Well, this distance is um, it looks like that's going to be y squared plus a squared square root it. That's what that is. Using the Pythagorean theorem. So this distance is going to be that, but that gets squared. So it's y squared plus a squared. And then um, you lose the square root because it gets squared. And um, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to... Um, that's what DE is, but if I want DE sub X, then that's going to be K DQ all over Y squared plus A squared. And then um, I'm going to say times the cosine of theta, because that, that will give me the X, so times the cosine of theta. Now, I feel pretty good about what I have here, and, I, and as you, get, you might guess, I'm going to sum this up using an integral, but here's a problem. 
my differential is in terms of dq, but depending on which of these I go to, my theta changes, so theta is a variable, and so does my y change. And so um, it should be nice if all my variables were just in one, in terms of one variable, especially because we don't know how to do double integration. And so most of us don't. And so what we need to do if we are gonna just do a single integration is we need one variable and the, dif the, differential, the differential should be in terms of that variable. <coughs> Let's try and put the dq in terms of dy and the theta in terms of dy. Okay, so here goes. I'm gonna say to get the dq in terms of dy, I'm gonna say q is to L, the total length, as dq is to the little length of dq. See, q is spread out over L, but dq, right there, this guy, is spread out over dy. So I've just managed to be able to take dq, and it turns out that dq is equal to q over L, two constants, times dy. So I can put that in for that. I'd like you to see one other thing. That theta, cosine of theta, if we use this triangle, is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So the cosine of theta, I'm going to write this here. The cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side, A, over the hypotenuse, which is um, y squared plus a squared square root it. So I can put that into there. When I do, I get that de sub x, putting all that stuff in there, is k times dq, this is dq, times um, y squared plus a squared, square root it, or not square root it, times the cosine of theta, which is um, a over, cosine of theta is a over the y squared plus a squared. I'm gonna rewrite this a different way. Instead of putting the square root, I'm gonna say it's to the one half power. Okay, so there you have it. Now, that may look like a really miserable integral to do, but um, let's, let's just take a look now. I'm just going to copy that down, um, and let's pretty that up a little bit. So, with this, with this in mind, I'm going to say the, um, the total electric field in the x-direction, since that's the only one that lasts, it's going to be equal to now the integral, but I'm going to pull out all the constants first. Here is a constant. K is a constant. Q over L is a constant. And so is A. A is a constant. And then all I have left is um, dy over, and then this gives me y squared plus a squared to the and when you multiply these together, it's to the three halves power. And um, I want to start, I want to tell it to start adding at y equals, now let's look at our picture. Start adding at y equals negative L over two. And don't stop adding till you get to y equals L over two. So I'm gonna say start adding at y equals negative L over two. And don't stop adding till I get to L over 2. Okay. Now you might be wondering, how do you solve something like this? And you have two ways that you can solve it. One way is to go to a table of integrals. It's in the back of your textbook. I will also give you a table of integrals um, sometime this chapter. Or um, your 89s and 91s, or your, your calculators, the 83s can't solve it, but all the other calculators that you use can. All right, um, I'll tell you more about how to solve this later.